。好，二零一四年嘅第十一条题目啦，就系、是、好典型嘅 Mary 去减肥啊。Mary 去减肥咧，我就成日教啲学生噶啦，就系食瘦肉。唔食其他嘢，究竟可唔可以帮到 Mary 去减肥同埋增加肌肉呢？咁啊，透过 Thinking Time 呢，去 mark 低晒所有 keyword 先。一开始啦，食瘦肉，要减肥，要增加肌肉。Mary 透过呢个餐单呢，其实都有机会去达到呢两个目标嘅。系啦，呢、這个瘦肉餐单呢。都有機會引起一啲健康問題㗎喎、哦，我哋就要講下呢個咁有爭議性嘅餐單，究竟有啲咩嘅好處，有啲咩嘅壞處？咁但係咩叫好，咩叫唔好先？兩常，我哋有準則，我哋有比較嘅平台嘅，咁就好似通識一樣啦。我哋有唔同嘅層面啦，有唔同嘅準則啦，去做個比較嘅。今次呢，我哋要比較嘅平台呢，就係營養需要同埋蛋白質嘅新陳代謝啦。咁呢个题目啦，落笔之前有啲咩嘢我哋要留意嘅呢？第一就係、是、何谓瘦肉餐单先，呢、這个餐单有咩咁特别先？第二啦，呢、這个餐单点解可以帮到 Mary 去减肥同埋增加肌肉先？而当中呢个餐单又会引起啲咩嘅健康问题呢？有一样嘢要提返嘅，就係、是、无论我哋係讲緊 Mary 嘅呢两个目标，减肥同埋增加肌肉，同埋引起一啲健康问题，我哋都係要從营养需要同埋蛋白质嘅新陈代謝呢去做个切入嘅，就唔好淨係去到讲健康问题先切入呢两样嘢，係由减肥同埋增加肌肉开始，已经要用返营养需求同埋蛋白质嘅新陈代謝去理解㗎啦。咁呢个题目从何入手呢？第一就系、是、呢个餐单有咩嘅好处？点解可以帮到 Mary 去减肥同埋增加肌肉？但系记住、哦，要讲翻营养需求同埋蛋白质新陈代谢、哦。而第二大段咧就讲下呢一个瘦肉嘅餐单会引起一啲咩嘅健康问题。同样地都系利用翻营养需求同埋蛋白质嘅新陈代谢咧去做个解说嘅。咁所以而家啦，大家快快手 download 翻份笔记，跟住我哋就入题目咯、哦。咁当大家下载緊嘅时候呢，咁我就讲下啦。今次呢条题目呢，係属于我哋写文类型嘅第四类型嘅题目，就係、是、日常生活嘅例子啦。咁究竟瘦肉餐单有咩咁特别呢？你见得到啦，呢啲就叫瘦肉啦，冇乜肥膏嘅。食呢啲鸡柳呢，係连个鸡皮呢都冇埋嘅。但下面呢啲你就真係肥肉啦，五花腩啦，哇，雪花肥牛啦。即使你块鸡扒冇咗个鸡皮嘅，但你仍然会见到呢啲黄冚冚嘅脂肪嘅，所以一定唔系食下面呢啲，而系食上面呢啲。咁瘦肉呢个餐单有咩咁特别呢？最基本啦，由于佢系肉类啊嘛，咁一定系高嘅蛋白质噶啦。而其次啦，由于佢都系肉类嘅关系，佢系少食呢个碳水化合物嘅。咁所以碳水化合物嘅水平都係较为低啦。同一時間啦，由于我哋冇晒呢啲咁嘅肥膏嘛，咁即係话啦，连脂肪嘅含量呢都係较为低嘅。咁引申出嚟嘅就係瘦肉嘅餐单呢，佢个能量提供呢，佢个能量价值呢都係相对上低。而第三啦，我哋淨係食瘦肉啫嘛，嗰啲生果啊、蔬菜啊，我哋亦都係较为少摄取嘅，亦即係话呢个餐单呢，亦都较为少嘅食用纤维啦。第四啦，由于我哋淨係食肉类啊嘛。跟住仲要瘦肉添啦，咁所以啦喺个维他命啊同埋矿物质呢，我哋都相对上较为少摄取嘅，例如一啲油溶性嘅维他命啦，又或者食嚟食去嘅矿物质，可能淨係得铁质啦，咁其他嘅矿物质会唔会都少一啲呢？咁我哋定义完瘦肉呢个餐单啦，我哋就讲下佢嘅好处啦。点样可以帮 Mary 去达到减肥同埋增加肌肉嘅呢个目标呢？第一啦，我哋就要利用返头先我哋所讲嘅瘦肉餐单有咩咁特别。第二啦，就要讲下呢个餐单嘅营养价值同埋佢嘅能量价值。第三，我哋就要讲下我哋嘅身体对于呢个餐单究竟有啲咩嘅反应，而正正就係讲緊新陈代謝。咁而家啦，同大家呢。去揾一揾書啦。新陳代謝有兩個層面，一個呢就係、是、拆解啲嘢嘅，另一個呢就係、是、組成啲嘢嘅。而家我哋就睇下點樣達到第一個目標啦。食瘦肉餐單幫 Mary 減肥，第一個特性就係瘦肉餐單較為低嘅脂肪同埋低嘅碳水化合物嘅含量，亦即係代表住佢嘅能量食都好低。关我哋减肥咩事呢？就係、是、由于我哋嘅能量摄取係低于我哋嘅能量嘅消耗，亦即係话我哋嘅身体需要去用咗一啲能量嘅储存，例如脂肪，去拆解啲脂肪，去释放能量俾自己。呢 part 我哋书本学过㗎嘛，我哋身体首先就用咗碳水化合物，其次就係用脂肪，用无可用啦，就去拆解蛋白质去释放能量啊嘛。
。咁由於而家呢個餐單係低能量嘅攝取啊嘛，即係話我哋嘅身體除咗用咗啲碳水化合物嘅儲存啦，亦都會用埋啲脂肪嘅儲存，亦都會幫到 Mary 咧去減肥咯。同一時間 ，Mary 又點樣增加肌肉呢？咁啊，由於佢係瘦肉嘅餐單，自不然就係多蛋白質啦。咁我哋攝取咗咁多蛋白質，有啲咩嘅營養嘅價值呢？蛋白質係由氨基酸所組成嘅。咁當我哋拆解咗之後啦，自不然我哋就能夠吸收得到啦。同化到好多嘅氨基酸，就将呢啲氨基酸就组成我哋嘅肌肉嘅纤维啦。咁呢度呢，我有一样嘢要提大家嘅，就唔好淨係咧理所当然去讲呢，吸收咗返嚟嘅氨基酸呢，自不然就係同化，就攞嚟制造咗肌肉嘅纤维啦。唔係㗎。都要睇下你身體嘅需要，亦即係講緊，如果你唔做運動嘅話，即係你嘅身體對於肌肉嘅需求都冇乜需要啦。咁你即使攝取咗好多嘅氨基酸呢，其實佢哋都係用唔到嘅，佢哋係會變成一啲。過多嘅氨基酸，而由於氨基酸我哋係唔會儲存㗎嘛，咁即係話啦，到頭來你都係用唔著嘅。好，咁跟住啦，就去到第三段喎，就係、是、瘦肉餐單會引起啲咩嘅健康問題呢？咁一開始啦，又要講下瘦肉餐單有咩特點啦。我哋嘅身體對於呢個瘦肉餐單究竟有啲咩嘅反應，有啲咩新陳代謝啦？而第三呢，又係運用返 disease approach 啊，呢個餐單仲會引起啲咩嘅疾病呢？第一啦，由於我哋較為少攝取蔬果蔬菜，即係我哋較為少攝取得到食用纖維啦。而食唔夠食用纖維有咩嘅唔好處啊？就係、是、唔能夠好有效地刺激到我哋大腸嘅蠕動，亦即係話我哋嘅糞便咧會留喺我哋嘅大腸長啲嘅時間去吸收剩餘嘅水分。咁所以我哋嘅糞便就會變得較為硬啦，較為乾啦。所以 Mary 咧就有機會面對便秘嘅。情況啦，除咗便秘之外啦，咁仲有冇其他嘅疾病都同呢個唔均衡嘅飲食有關係噶？當然有啦，由於我哋少食咗蔬果蔬菜，即係話我哋對於維他命 C 嘅攝取咧，都係會少咗嘅。咁阿 Mary 咧，亦都有機會患有 scurvy 壞血病啦。咁其實呢一部分係咪正正就係由營養需要去入手啊？跟住去到呢边喎，点解会有肾衰竭同埋肝衰竭呢？就係、是、由于啦，我哋摄取大量嘅蛋白质。头先我哋都讲过啦，如果你食咁多蛋白质，但係唔做运动嘅话，咁其实你嘅身体对于蛋白质、氨基酸嘅需求其实都唔係咁多啫。由于我哋嘅身体係唔会储存过多嘅氨基酸，所以呢啲过多嘅氨基酸呢，就会喺个肝脏嗰处进行脱氨作用，去被拆解成为尿素，而尿素呢，亦都会透过肾脏呢。去排泄咗出去，所以你發現呢個瘦肉嘅餐單係有機會增加咗阿 Mary 嘅肝臟同埋腎臟嘅負擔嘅。咁啊，因為食咁多蛋白質，你又唔做運動，咁多氨基酸我又唔會儲，咁個肝臟就為死死地氣幫你做脱氨作用，增加咗肝臟嘅負擔。拆咗咁多個尿素出嚟啦，我哋個腎臟又要幫你去排走佢，你又增加咗腎臟嘅負擔。所以啦，透過蛋白質嘅新陳代。代謝咧，我哋就能夠解釋到點解 Mary 咧係有大啲嘅機會去患上腎衰竭同埋肝衰竭啦。好，又嚟到一點出發啦。今次嘅題目就係講瘦肉餐，當中我哋有兩個平台，我哋需要理解。第一個就係營養需要，第二個就係蛋白質嘅新陳代謝。我哋先講下營養需要啦，就係、是、透過個營養價值去了解下究竟。當一個人淨係食瘦肉嘅時候，會引申啲咩嘅缺乏症呢？又或者從能量嘅需求去理解翻能量嘅攝取同埋能量嘅支出，再解釋翻點解佢會瘦咗呢？跟住啦，就講翻蛋白質嘅新陳代謝啦。過量攝取蛋白質、氨基酸究竟會唔會儲存？原來唔會儲存，我哋會進行脱氨作用。有關蛋白質嘅新陳代謝呢，我哋都要講翻整個故事啦。消化、吸收、同化。當我哋食咗啲蛋白質。消化咗成为氨基酸，我哋吸收咗入去我哋嘅血管，行匀全身嘅时候，代唔代表我哋嘅身体必然会将佢同化去制造我哋自己身体嘅蛋白质呢？正正好多美容产品都同大家讲嘅，哎呀，食多啲骨胶原啦，拆解咗啲骨胶原呢，你嘅身体就能够吸收得到，能够整理自己人类嘅骨胶原㗎啦。Sorry 啊，唔代表可以嘅，食咗还食咗，用还用㗎。而如果我哋係需要製造蛋白質嘅，咁我哋自不然都要講下轉錄同埋轉譯嘅過程啦。Two one four question eleven is the essay type question. This question is about the lean meat diet. So let's talk about the thinking time. Any keywords we need to highlight? The lean meat to lose weight, 
building muscles. At the same time, we need to talk about the health problem associated with this diet. And we need to discuss the pros and cons of this controversial diet. But when we are talking about the pros and cons, it's just like the liberal studies. We need a platform. We need some criteria to compare something. So in this question, we need to talk about the nutritional needs of the body and the protein metabolism. So for the precaution, any focus of this essay, First of all, we need to define what is the lean meat diet. Secondly, how can this diet help us to achieve these two aims, losing weight and building muscles? Then, any health problem associated with this diet? When we are talking about how can this diet help us to achieve the goals and also any health problem associated with this diet, we need to talk about the nutritional needs and the protein metabolism. So that's why for the scaffolding. First of all, we need to talk about the pros, explain how does this diet help people to achieve these two goals with regard to the nutritional need of the body and the protein metabolism. And for second paragraph, we talk about the cons, explain how this diet lead to the health problem. Also with regard to the nutritional need of our body and protein metabolism. You can download the essay writing worksheet in the description or the comment section to follow the whole video easily. So when you're downloading the worksheet, let me have a very brief introduction of this question. The question belongs to the fourth type of the essay type question. It's about the daily life case. How can we use this diet to lose weight and build muscle? So first of all, you need to define the lean meat diet. So you can see that they are the lean meat without the fat. So you cannot find the fat in this free meat, no matter it's beef, pork or chicken. But not like this. You can see the pork, you can see the chicken, even we remove the chicken skin. You can still see the yellow fatty tissue and also a lot of fatty tissue in this beef, right? So we are not talking about this type of meat. We are talking about this type of lean meat. So for the lean meat, first of all, because it's meat itself, so it's rich in protein. Secondly, because they are meat, so that's why it contains less carbohydrates. And also it's lean meat, so that's why they are also lower fat. So it implies that the energy values of the lean meat diet is also lower. Thirdly, because we only eat the lean meat, we do not eat the vegetables and the fruits, so that's why the intake of the dietary fiber will also be lower. And lastly, because we only feed on the lean meat, there will be lower vitamins and minerals intake. For example, some fat-soluble vitamins. We do not intake it that much. And for the minerals, maybe we can obtain the iron, but what about other minerals? After we have the definition of the lean meat, so we have the scaffolding to explain how this diet help people to achieve their goal. So first of all, we need to recall the feature of the lean meat diet. And then we need to recall the nutritional and the energy values of this diet. And we also need to talk about the metabolism. Explain how our body react to this diet. Let's have a quick revision. For the metabolism, there are two parts. One part is the catabolism, breaking down reactions, and the anabolism, building up reaction in our body. So first of all, we talk about the losing weight. The feature of the lean meat is low fat and low carbohydrates. That's why when we are talking about the nutritional values or the energy value, we can claim that lean meat diet, it contains low energy values. And how does it help to achieve our goal? So we need to talk about the energy intake and the energy expenditure. So because the energy value of this diet is very low, therefore the energy intake is lower than the energy expenditure. So that's why our body need to break down the energy storage. We need to consume that. Therefore, we need to consume the energy storage in our body. For example, the carbohydrates and the fat. So in this part, you need to recall the very fundamental concept is that what is the priority of the food substance we use to release energy? First, we use the carbohydrates, which is the readily used energy source. Secondly, is the energy storage, which is the fat. And for the last energy reserve is the protein. So in this diet, we only feed on the lean meat. We do not intake sufficient amount of carbohydrates and fat. So that's why our body will consume all the energy storage of the carbohydrates and fat. 
So that's the way to help us to lose the body weight. Secondly, for the building muscle, the lean meat diet is rich in protein. The diet is rich in protein. It means that after the digestion, we can break down the protein into amino acid for absorption and assimilation. We can uptake and use the protein, the amino acid to build up our muscle fiber. But one thing I would like to mention is that the last few words, based on the body need. So that's why you need to mention that the people, they also do some exercise to build up some muscles, rather than they only fit on the limit but do not do exercise at all. If the people, they do not do the exercise, actually their body do not have such need so their body do not have such high demand of the amino acid or the protein. Therefore, there will be just an excessive amino acid intake for nothing. They cannot really build up the muscle at all. And for next paragraph, we talk about the health problem. And there are two aspects. One of them is the unbalanced diet based on the nutritional need. And the second aspect is about the liver and the kidney failure, about the protein metabolism. So just like the second paragraph, we need to recall the feature of the lean meat diet. And then we need to explain how our body reacts to such diet related to the metabolism. And thirdly, about the disease approach, any disease will be caused. Because we do not intake sufficient amount of vegetables or fruit, so that's why there will be lower dietary fiber in our diet. So what is the problem of lower dietary fiber intake? So there will be less fiber to stimulate the peristalsis in our large intestine. So that's why the feces will stay in our large intestine for longer time for the absorption of the remaining water from the feces. So the feces will become harder and drier. So the side effect will be constipation. So any other deficiency disease can be caused because we do not have enough amount of the vegetables or the fruit intake, so there will be lower vitamin C intake. So it will lead to the deficiency disease called scurvy, breathing gums and slow healing of the wound. And it's all about the nutritional need. So let's talk about the protein metabolism. So for the lean meat diet, there is a high protein diet. So for the protein, as what we say that, as I mentioned, if you do not do exercise, so the high protein intake will be a burden. There will be an excess amino acid. And the excess amino acid, we do not store it in our body. So the excess amino acid will be deaminated into the urea by the liver. And the urea will be excreted by the kidney you can see that the excessive amino acid intake will increase the liver and the kidney workload. Therefore, it will lead to liver or the kidney failure. So it's about the protein metabolism. Let's talk about the curriculum mapping. This question starts from the lean meat diet, and we need to analyze lean meat diet by using two aspects, two criteria. One is the nutritional need, and the other one is the protein metabolism. So for the nutritional need, okay, so we need to think about the nutritional values. Is rich in protein? Yes, I agree. But what about other food substance? The vitamins, the minerals, the dietary fiber, something like this, and also the energy value as well. So we need to think about the energy intake and output to explain that why the people, they can lose weight or not. And then for the protein metabolism, and we need to think about that the excessive intake of the amino acid. We do not store the excessive amino acid. Therefore, the liver will undergo the deamination to break down the amino acid. One part will be into urea, and, and the other part will be converted into carbohydrates. When we are talking about the metabolism, we also need to think about the whole story, the digestion, absorption, and assimilation. Um, and then we think about the protein synthesis, and when we are talking about the protein synthesis, we also need to recall the transcription and translation. One more thing I would like to talk about is the assimilation. So some of the cosmetic products, they claim that it contains a lot of collagen. And for the collagen, it's good for our skin. Because in the skin, if there is enough amount of collagen, it will become a bit elastic. But the point is that even you drink or eat the collagen from the cosmetic product or even eat the pig skin. So even you really digest the collagen into amino acid, it doesn't mean that your body will use this amino acid to build up your collagen in your skin. So that's why you just buy some very expensive cosmetic products with no use.